niche markets in the painting industry. And what do I mean by that? Medical office painting. I currently paint many offices, many medical offices from dentists to eye doctors, laser and cataract. And I want to share, share this story with you. It was about seven years ago, I got called in to quote a medical office. Seven years later, I am still there. In fact, the last two years, we haven't even provided a quote to repaint the medical office. Fourth of July week, they called me the head of time, six, eight months ahead of time, and said, don't forget to put us on the calendar. We put them on the calendar two or three weeks ahead of time, we touch base, and we just go in and paint, and we bill them afterwards. But also, my other, other medical offices schedule ahead of time Christmas week because they're closed also. And we repaint these year after year after year. And we get top dollar for these because it's a service we reprovide in a certain time of year that they need. And many a times the office managers who usually are the ones making the phone call and making the decision on who is going to be hired or at least has a lot of input on that decision. Uh, no other office managers and they all talk so it's a great way to get into it so I want to share a bunch of things with you today about medical office painting uh, some pros some cons some numbers uh, how do you get involved with these medical office painters I am Ron Rams and I'm a DYB coach why might this be a great addition to your current painting services well it's a very similar to residential repaints. We have walls, trim, and doors. Very rarely there's a ceiling to be painted. Very rarely there's baseboard because it's rubber based in medical offices. So it's also done during your slower times. Generally they want this done when they're closed. So you're working for during their closed time is holiday weeks, which is quite often sometimes hard to fill when you're doing residential repaints. Uh, Fourth of July week, or it's the middle of uh, winter, Christmas week when they're closed down. So it works well. And at this time, you're getting a premium for your time because you're blocking off your schedule to fit them. Even though it might be your slower time, it fits perfectly for them. And the jobs are very manual, both in hour and cost. And it's not a big risk of a change. You're used to doing this kind of work and it fits just right in with walls and trim. So it's actually a fairly easy job. How big is the market? So you're thinking, oh, I know a few offices. Well, I'm gonna share some data with you right now. Doctor's office and size of, of how many doctor's offices. There's 230, nationwide, 230,187 doctor's offices. Dental offices. 186,000 and some change. And the newest one to pop up, they're probably popping up in neighborhoods near you, is these new urgent care facilities. As of last year, there was 7,100 of them in the United States. And I know around me, as they're probably around you, they're building some more right now. So, okay, so what does that mean? Foot traffic through these medical offices. Doctor's offices had 883 million visits last year. Dentist office, I don't have a number, but they say 64% of adults visit the dentist. So that's a lot of adults, there's a lot of visits, and I know my doctor uh, has us coming in twice a year. And then urgent care facilities, which is a newer one on the block. They had 160 million patients last year, so that's 160 million visits. And you start thinking of this, what does that mean? That's people walking through the door, they're touching the trim, they're touching the doors, they're using the bathrooms, they're in those individual offices, so there's a lot of wear and tear, and those, those have to be, be repainted. Economic data, the average office for non-janitorial office spending, in 2016, I, I apologize, the latest data they have out there, $5,330 per office. So you might have an office that's only three people and there might be an office where there's 30 people. So there's, there's a decent amount uh, of, of work going on out there. So what are the pros when you're doing medical office repaints? All surgical triage facilities. So as I mentioned, we do a laser and cataract uh, they do surgeries. They actually have two operating rooms. You have dentists who actually do some, some surgery also. Those are inspected yearly by the state. There's a state agency that inspects that. And as one, my office manager, who, who gives me the most business and also refers me to other people, is the last thing they want to do during their inspection is fail because of dirt, chips, painting, 
things like that. They want this facility to look fresh. So also, that yearly certification, it, dis, it d depends on that inspection. So if it's all painted, that's one last thing on their mind. Also, it's a non-emotional purchase. It's not like a residential repaint with they hemming and hawing on color, how it's going to work, does it fit their budget? This is a non-emotional purchase for the office manager. It's usually a check mark on their to-do list. So also, they have faster payments than commercial painting. So on the larger commercial paintings or GCs, uh, we tend to have a check waiting for us. And when we're done, it's usually one or two weeks, if not less, to get paid for the, for the, the completion. They're very happy that this happens. And often, the owners of these medical offices not only have one in one town, they might have multiple ones in other towns also. So currently, as I, as I record this, we are on a doctor's office that's in the second location. It's actually the second location in the same building uh, that he actually owns a separate, uh, a different practice. He was happy with the, with the first one, sent us up to do the second one. What are the cons? You have to find the gatekeeper. You have to get through that gatekeeper to the person who's making the decision, which is often the first line of defense is the gatekeeper, but the office manager is the one who will either like you or reject you. So aim for the office manager. Uh, the other con, it's off hours painting and sometimes off hours where if you can't do it during a holiday week, it's uh, nights or weekends and that they're not flexible on the schedule. You can't call them on Monday and say, hey, something happened, we'll be there next week. That doesn't work for them. When they schedule, they schedule you. How do you stand out the paint options? All the leading manufacturers come out with some kind of paint, antibacterial paint. We have um, Sherman Williams Paint Shield, and then we have Benjamin Moore's Scuff X, which is new to the market. A lot of the, what we find is a lot of these office managers have never heard about this, so it's a great upsell. For them, we can also charge a premium for these paints. Uh, one of the other, um, how do we sell ourselves, is our availability, how flexible we are to work around their schedule. In fact, one of our latest offices we did, we did some off hours, but most of the time, because we were willing to work with them in their schedule, they shut down certain offices or sections of offices. And the only time we had to work off hours was the waiting room and actually where they check in everybody and there's a lot of nurses and, and office staff. So that was office. That was off hours. Everything else was, was they worked with us because they were just so happy to get it done. So also another way to stand out is that not only the consultation of the, the latest colors, maybe bring in a cons consult uh, person for the paint, but also the keeping track of their paints. What I find is all these office managers, they don't have time to keep track of all these paints. So what happens is they, when they call you up, they say the same color as last year. But we also find is during the year that they do work in these facilities. They're gonna be moving some medical uh, equipment. They might be purchasing new medical equipment that's being mounted to walls. Things are being moved. Uh, cabinets are being removed for, for new things and they need oddball things painted. Great way to uh, send a painter over there for a day, uh, but you also keep track of all their colors. Uh, when they call you, you have that information with them. And if you have a shop, sometimes you just keep the extra paint at your shop because they won't know where it is the next time you go over there. So a uh, great way to upsell. You can always say, we keep your paint and keep track of your paints, and we will keep whatever additional paint is in our shop so when you need it. So who are they going to call once you do the original paint? You. You have their paints. So another way is you can guarantee them that when they open up the next morning, they're not going to see that you are there. It's going to be clean. You're using HeparVac uh, vacuum extractors, uh, and it's going to be beautiful. And that is an upsell to them. They are willing to pay a premium for that service. So it's a great, great, great way to. So what are the additional work opportunities with medical paint? So we, we've already painted the facility is the painter for the days during the time. Let them know that um, a, painter for, a painter for a day is available, that you can send a painter just to do touch-ups. Give them a price ahead of time. Great way to upsell. Uh, you can also, after you've done the uh, initial painting and they are happy, 
they are thrilled. You can offer them a yearly contract. And what's a yearly contract? Because you can set a price ahead of time. You can use the same price you've done, but you can also just do a one coat repaint and have a reduced price so they can actually plan out ahead of time that what's going to cost for their budget. Great way for a maintenance, uh, a maintenance contract with them. So you also got to maintain all their colors uh, that they need. Remember that because they are not going to do it. So in the additional, other additional work opportunities, as I mentioned before, generally uh, these doctors own multiple locations in different cities. Uh, and all the cities are fairly close. They don't go very far, but they want to make sure they can, they can uh, cover a larger, larger area than just one office. So how do you take advantage of this opportunity? Well, number one, it's cold calling. And uh, who you, who's going to do the cold calling? Are you going to do it in-house? Are you going to do it yourself? Are you going to have one of your salespeople do it? Or are you going to have an outside service? Those are something you have to think about. So then you're going to have to write a script. So the script, what is the script going to say? Well, you know, you got to write the script. What is the current process for selecting a, ma a maintenance contractor? Word it the way that it sounds great and is not as harsh. Man, who would be responsible to oversee this process? Who's the person you need to talk to? And, you know, you can also ask them, when was the last time it was painted? You know, it's, uh, it's kind of funny. Sometimes they'll say, we don't remember. <laughs> it's been this color ever since. So, and then also, uh, do they have any current needs at this time? Um, and they might. They might be looking for an estimate right now. Maybe that's something. They'll take your information. And, of course, ask if, if that gets to this point, ask if there's a follow-up. So, um, and then ask them if you could email them a, maybe have a list of maintenance tips and ask them for an email and forward that. So, and then put them on a separate list in, in a separate list in your database. You know, don't put them in the residential repaint list. You know, open up a separate database just for these office repaints so you can send them industry specific items. Uh, and then you want to follow up, follow up, the email follow up. Of course, the thank you cards are great. Uh, we got a newsletter specifically targeted to that niche, the medical office niche. Uh, and give them information and then a little blurb about yourself and be regular with this because the person remembers they'll remember you you have to touch them so many times so those are the ways so and then another way if the uh, cold calling isn't for you you're not having a salesperson do it and you're not using an outside direct mail so what is the direct mail Directly, you're going to create a postcard targeted to that industry and that service industry in your area. Uh, you're going to have to put a budget together for this. Uh, it's going to take some time, so you're going to block out some time. You're going to invest some money in the direct mail. You're not only going to have the postcards made, you're going to have some graphics put on them, and you're going to have to set aside some marketing dollars. Uh, the labor, the cost of labor in-house or uh, using a virtual assistant. So there's a little, a little additional cost there. Of course, postage also. How do we find outside help to make these calls? Well, you can use a virtual assistant. A uh, virtual assistant we found up on a place called Upwork. It's upwork.com. They have several, several options, and they're very specific of who you can actually use over there. And they give you an option of, uh, of how much you want to spend an hour for this virtual assistant to make these calls. Maybe you want to have a conversation with them. They have a pleasant voice. Uh, and these people, these different virtual assistants will actually in their write-up say what they do. They do cold call for a living. So if they're not very emotionally tied to this, they're cold calling for so many. Maybe you can even give them a bonus for every appointment they set. That'd be a great way to get a little deeper into that. So how do you develop your list? You're going to have to determine the target market you want to go after. And the targets being, are you going after dentists? Are you going after urgent care facilities? Are you going after eye doctors, chiropractor, maybe a wellness and nutrition office, maybe a hospital? In a hospital, just remember, you're going to need a large crew. Uh, two or three or four person crew is not going to uh, work in a hospital because they need something done now and they need it done fast. So you're going to have a larger company and hospitals are a little slower to pay you know, that we found than the dentists, eye doctors and, and the such. Uh, what I found with, the, with this list, the ones who require painting more often are the dentists and the eye doctors and the urgent care facilities. 
they want to keep them fresh. So you can always do a Google search. You can always put a list together that way. Uh, you can also use Upwork or another VA to do the virtual assistant to do this. But if you'd rather do direct mail, there's a, there's a play, uh, a site out there called infousa.com. That's infousa.com. And if you go visit that site, you're going to see that you can actually go and just use medical facilities. You can use medical offices. They're that specific on their direct mail. So in this video we've covered so far, we've call, covered uh, the need out there. How many people walk in through these office doors on all these visits every year? The different ways to sell. We covered ways of exploring who to touch base with different sell options. So now it's in your hands. So please share with us your journey in the medical light commercial painting. We'd love to hear from you. Once again, I'm Ron Rims and I'm a DYB coach. I hope this video helped.